uh, well, maybe this hygiene theory plays through this mechanism. So if we have a very bushy and overgrown bowel flora, we're less likely to catch nasty bugs because they get inactivated by our flora. In fact, the flora, together with acid and together with bile, are major defense mechanisms for us. So could an environmental thing, such as taking antibiotics, predispose you to the MAP infection or to developing disease? I think it's a very interesting question because we have had an increased rise in Crohn's and colitis and you can parallel that, parallel that to the development of the Volkswagen or use of antibiotics, you see. That happened about the same time. So, yeah, I mean, it does make sense that um, pseudomembranous colitis uh, was rare before antibiotics came in in the 50s, and it's extremely common now. Um, does it mean, then, that we damage our flora to a certain extent and allow MAP to penetrate our tissues? Interesting point, and maybe someone would like to do a PhD on that. Uh, does cross-reactivity between MAP and human intestinal antigens characterize Crohn's disease? Could that be what's going on in the mechanism? No, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's just an epiphenomenon as, as we have in, say, yeah. anti-mitochondrial antibodies and primary bilirosis. Uh, I, I think it's more of a diagnostic potential rather than a causality, but I don't know enough about the area. Uh, another, well, sort of the major thing that, that, that uh, people will say when you say mm -hmm. there's a seven to one's odds ratio of being MAP infected when you have Crohn's disease is they'll just say, well, it's, it's a secondary invader, it's just in, you know, in, uh, getting inside inflamed tissues. How, how? Well, we can go back to Cox postulates. Uh, when you take the bug, insert it into an animal, it develops Crohn's disease. Simple as that. Uh, in baby, baby coats. And the same thing happens in cattle. So is it a secondary invader? How come if you inject it intra, intravenously, the MAP actually is trophic for the small bowel, for the terminal ileum? Uh, there's too much against this. Um, why not all the bacterial flora that are in our bowel? And how come it, it is not a secondary invader in colitis? The differences are so huge between colitis and Crohn's in most detection studies that that is the simple answer for that. This is the primary infective agent. If it was secondary, it would invade anything that's inflamed. Mm -hmm. Uh, we invade celiac disease too, also in play. And it doesn't? No. No. Uh, and yeah, I mean that, that's what it comes down to too. It's, it's, it's a pathogen. It's a proven pathogen. Yeah, it's a proven it's, pathogen. It's I mean, it may well be that once you get Crohn's and inflammation, it's much easier for MAP to enter the areas where there is patchy inflammation. And one of the things I'd like to ask you, uh, ask everybody, why is it regional? Why is it, why is this, it's skip lesions, you know? Why is one piece of bowel more resistant than other piece? It's not genetic, obviously, it's something different going on. And I think one of the answers that helped me to understand that is, well, we didn't know why duodenal ulcer was regional and helicobacter was throughout the stomach. Why doesn't it occur in the fundus, in the antrum, in the body? There must be other factors which we don't know now. And we didn't know the answer about duodenal ulcer until someone published the fact that you had ectopic gastric mucosa in the duodenum. That's the only place it occurs. It only occurs in gastric mucosa. It's a gastric ulcer in the duodenum. So I think these unanswered questions will become answered as time passes. Uh, how do biofilms play in the... Into oh, biofilms is a recent technology, no, no older than 20 years, and it's a fascinating area, but I think a lot of answers are going to come from biofilms, which, which occur in many of the wet areas of our body, like our eyes, mouth, and the colon, and there is an unstirred layer, 200 nanometers or, there, or thereabouts, which has a matrix like a glue with bugs growing in there. And I think this is where the business end of the infection inflammation is. And I certainly don't understand it, but it's, it's a fascinating area to work in. Would it have anything to do with patchy, finding the patchy distribution? It, it may well do so. I mean, it, it could be, uh, because it's so irregular, I don't think there's an anatomical distribution of the biofilm that varies from place to place. But in, in, in fact, it might be damaged by a spreading infection which then invades in that area but has been perhaps blocked by some mechanism not to spread elsewhere. The answer is we don't know, but the biofilm is the key to how 
map enters into the tissues if it comes through the mouth, which I think it does. Is MAP found in diseased tissues or is it found in normal tissues as well? Well, we mostly look in diseased tissues, but it can be found in normal tissues and is, for example, found in, in white cells and can be cultured from the buffy coat of, of blood and yet um, you don't have arteritis or anything like that. So I think it's... Um, and it's found, for example, in cattle where there is no inflammation. You can find it in normal tissues. That's my best understanding yeah. of it, but I haven't read yeah. it recently. Yeah. So if you found it in normal tissue, that sort of says, well, it can colonize normal tissue. It doesn't have to be inflamed tissue. Are you talking in Crohn's then, patients or in people who are coming to colonoscopy and don't have Crohn's? Yes, both. And well, then if, if a Crohn's patient is yeah. colonized in a normal tissue, is that um, with does the inflammation have to be localized to where the map is colonizing or, or does it? At this stage we have difficulty in differentiating passing map and invading map. Uh, one of the ways that we can do is to look at the RNA uh, levels in the, in the blood and then you can see that it's dividing. Uh, one would have thought that if there is a, a bacteremia of map in a person then it's more likely to be an infection as you have with chlamydia pneumonia, for example. But um, that these are areas that need to be worked out as well. Because clearly we have a lot of MAP going through the healthy population, drinking milk every day. And why do some people go on and have the disease? I think part of the explanation comes from tuberculosis, where 100 people become infected, only 10 actually end up with their phenotypic disease. So there's a host parasite relationship that can prevent us going on to the disease. But where do you draw the line? Where do you call it infection? And where do you call it residency? If MAP isolates from humans or genetic matches of those from, say, cattle, the suspected mode of transmission, um, does this mean that the MAP isolates found in humans? Or, or sorry, if they're not genetic matches, yes. does that mean that those map, uh, the map didn't come from the cattle, or could there have been a mutation along the way or during that? Yeah, I don't infection? think we have any answers there. I know from Sally Nasser's work where the genetic map was made up out of the 12 patients who had uh, map, and I think only two were identical. So I think there's a large number of genetically diverse map, as there are with Helicobacter. I mean. In our studies, just for Helicobacter is a nice example, we could find 10 different Helicobacters in the same patient's stomach. <laughs> so I think we may have multiple infections in the same person, and maybe that's what might be needed. There may be more pathogenic strains, as we have Helicobacter strains, and less pathogenic strains. And you know, we could have colonization by the less pathogenic, but e disease when a second or third comes in. I think there's so much to be done. All right, is there any way to determine um Besides uh, testing through blood, PCR, yeah. culture, tissue samples, um, just through the disease phenotype, the type of disease, whether it's a granulomatous uh, stricturing, uh, Crohn's colitis, as to who will respond to um, anti-map. Oh, question of response of which Crohn seems to respond better. We've tried to look at this in our patients, and although it tends to work better for those with terminal ileal disease and, and cecum rather than left-sided disease. Uh, I think the jury is out. We've not done enough treatment and, and correlations to know. Um, what do you think, finally, what do you think the most important areas of research are going forward? Well, detection methods have to be improved and validated and be reproducible. That's very important. Um, I don't think we should now wait and let people lose their bowels and have all manner of operations. I think we need to have a trial done with the currently available drugs that already give us such responses, but I think we need to develop better drugs to kill intracellular MAP. And there are people working on this already in the States. Some MAP-specific antibiotics? Far, far more MAP-specific antibiotics, yeah.